Urkadark, do 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 just deleting my apps because I want to save memory and resources and battery. Do 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 wrong. I'm Quinn of Snazzy Labs, and there are so many misconceptions behind iOS multitasking. This thing here, this little app tapping thing, it's a complete waste of time. It's a placebo. It makes no sense, and that's not how iOS multitasking works. By doing this, you're wasting your time. I'm Quinn of Snazzy Labs, and I'm here to tell you the science behind iOS multitasking. Let's begin. This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the secret behind exceptional websites. To learn more, go to squarespace.com snazzy. So ever since iOS 4, this little multitasking bar has been uh, in the OS, okay? Now, when you hold the icon and it starts to jiggle, a little red dash appears above the icon. And many people, even Apple Store geniuses, have said if your device is running slow or if your battery is not very good, start zapping these apps because these are being multitasked. And by killing all the multitask apps, you're going to save battery and performance. And this is 100% false. I think it's Apple's fault. It's a misconception in this whole entire bar, and I don't blame you if you don't understand because it's kind of a weird concept. But just because an app is in this bar doesn't mean it's being multitasked and doesn't mean it's running. A lot of these applications are not running and haven't been open for days or weeks on end. I do not think Apple should have called this the multitask bar as they do. I think they should call it the recent apps bar because that's really more of what it is. And I'm here to explain to you exactly how applications on iOS work. There are five states of execution, okay? There is not running, there is inactive, there is active, background and suspended. Now we'll start from the top. Not running is pretty basic. It means it's not open, it hasn't been open for many days, and it's not executing code, it's doing absolutely nothing. It's just stored on your device. Inactive means the app is running, but it's not actively executing code because you've locked the screen. So let's say I have my Twitter application open here. If I lock my screen, it is inactive. The app is in the foreground, but it's not running, okay? Now, active is pretty basic as well. It's in use. I'm currently using the application. As such, it's active. Now, these next two are where it gets confusing and where people don't really understand iOS multitasking. There is background and suspended. Now, Background is interesting because what background means is it's no longer on screen, but it's still executing code. And what suspended means is it is resident in the memory on the device, but it's not executing code. So let's talk about when an app moves to the app, uh, into the background. I've opened my uh, Tweetbot application here. When I close this, it stays in the background for less than five seconds because this does not execute any code after it closes. Some applications, which I'm going to talk about, will continue to run in the background. But 99% of the apps in the App Store do not, and they move to background in, or excuse me, they move to suspended in less than five seconds. Now, when they're in suspended mode, this means they're not using processor power. They're doing absolutely nothing to your battery. However, they are taking memory. They are taking RAM. However, you do not need to zap apps to free up memory. And these RAM clears, yes, they do clear RAM. Yes, they do clear memory, but it's not necessary because iOS manages this all automatically iOS auto purges information and RAM when it needs more space. So let's say I have 100 applications open and I open a big game like Infinity Blade. Well, crap, it needs more RAM, so it's going to close a bunch of applications I haven't used in quite some time. And when I reopen Tweetbot, even though it's in this multitasking bar, it will launch as if it has been closed because it is. It's not running, okay? Now, the OS, a lot of people say, well, I delete applications in this bottom bar because I've noticed it speeds up the OS, and that's completely false as well. iOS is given a certain allotment of memory just for the OS. Sometimes it's wired, sometimes it's not wired, but it has a certain set designated piece of memory, and there is no more that will be added to it. So even if you have no applications running, iOS has no more memory allotted to it as if it had every application on your phone open, okay? Now, so that's one part of it. The other thing is um, it has a certain allotment of memory, okay? So it, all, it always has the ability to expand. There's always more memory for iOS until it hits that certain point. And it usually never does because iOS is pretty, pretty well uh, consistent and pretty easy on your, uh, on your memory. But that's one thing to note. Uh, it's not, it's completely idiotic to say that by deleting apps it will speed up your OS because it doesn't. There's 
what your apps run on, the memory that your apps run on is completely different from the OS and deleting it does not add to the performance of your phone. Okay. Now let's talk about the multitasking bar specifically. I noted earlier that it's kind of a facade. It's not really multitasking. Yes, there are a few applications in here that multitask, but that doesn't matter. Um, they, um, you know, it, it's not real. It's a, it's a proxy. What happens is these five states of execution, all of them may be in this bar. This application, as you can see here, Smash Cops, even though it's in the multitasking bar, when I tap it, it opens for the first time because it was not running and now I've made it active. It had zero memory that it was taking. It was just in that bar. Now let's talk about background tasks because there are tasks that do run into the background and don't immediately go into suspension like most applications. Now apps can request uh, to run in the background and they do have to be approved by Apple to do this, but let's say I have a application that downloads music videos, okay? What the app can say is, hello iPhone, I'm downloading this app, or I'm downloading this music video and I'm not quite done yet. So rather than kill me in five seconds like you do with most apps, or rather than, excuse me, suspend me like you do in five minutes, let me run in the background for a couple of minutes. And iOS says, okay, you can run for a couple of minutes. Now the applications, when they're completed, are supposed to say, okay, I'm done. And iOS will shut those applications into suspension. However, if the application does not finish in about 10 minutes, iOS automatically kills it. So if I have a two gigabyte uh, music video I'm downloading and it's not done in 10 minutes, iOS says, sorry application, I don't care if you're done or not, you're taking too much power and energy, so I'm gonna kill you, okay? So that's what happens, and it throws that application into suspension where it's still resident in the memory, as we remember, but it's not actually executing code. Now, there is one more setting called infinite background or indefinite background, okay? Now, what this setting means is it runs, even though it's been open for longer than 10 minutes, and there's only five types of applications that can do this, and they are very, very highly scrutinized by Apple, and very, very little of these applications are approved. So apps that can play music can run indefinitely. They can just run until you're done listening to music. Also, location applications like Garmin or TomTom or any of the GPS applications that need to keep track of where you are. Those can run indefinitely. Third, uh, applications that use voice or voice over IP like Skype. Skype will run forever and ever and ever, even though it's not being actively used. Uh, new stand apps will automatically download content and that just happens. Usually it doesn't happen on Wi-Fi, or excuse me, usually it doesn't happen unless you're on Wi-Fi and plugged into the wall, but those are capable of indefinitely running in the background. And five, applications that receive continuous updates from a hardware accessory. So if I had uh, something plugged into the bottom, that will continue to run indefinitely in the background. Now, as I stated earlier, these apps are highly scrutinized by Apple and very, very few get approved. Furthermore, iOS knows what that's supposed to be doing indefinitely. And if, for example, I stop listening to music, it's going to say, what are you doing still open? And it automatically throws it into suspension. So all of these applications need approval from Apple to do this, and very, very few actually make it into the store. So all in all, in final summation, this is not a multitasking bar, and it's it's foolish to think that by deleting these little applications here that you're doing anything at all. The only exception, the only reason you would want to X this out is let's say I have a game like Puzzle Juice that's frozen. If the app is frozen, if it's not responsive, instead of turning your phone off and turning it back on, you can hold it, delete it, and then reopen it as a new application. But that's the only time ever, 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 ever that you need to use that little red dash. There's no reason for it. Applications work very, very smartly. iOS is very strict on how they actually run. And by Xing those little things out, you're just wasting your time. It does not save battery. It does not free up memory. It's a complete waste of time. Please do not do it. And tell others that think that it is helpful, refer them to this video because it's not. It's a waste of your time. You should stop right now. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Quinn of Snazzy Labs. Have a great weekend. And as always, stay snazzy. See you later, folks. This video was sponsored by the folks at Squarespace, the secret behind exceptional websites. I host my blog and organize ramblings.com with Squarespace and it's fantastic. I use their blog importer to do a full import from WordPress and now I have real time front end theme, column, widget, page editing and more. I can view statistics, manage comments, block users, inject my own code. There are so many things you can do with Squarespace all at the click of a button. 
Squarespace doesn't just give you a website builder, creator, and manager, but they also host for you as well and give you priority bandwidth. If you get featured on CNN.com and have 50,000 visitors in five minutes, it's no problem. It's impossible to crash a Squarespace website. It's perfect for beginners and advanced users. If you know your way around the web, you can inject code HTML, CSS, no problem, and no two Squarespace websites look the same. I love these guys and know you will too. To support me, Go to squarespace.com slash snazzy to sign up for a two-week free trial. No credit card nor confirmation is required. After that, if you decide Squarespace is for you, which I'm sure you will, you can save 15% off for six months by using the offer code snazzy2. Thanks for watching, and as always, stay snazzy. See you later, folks.